everyone and welcome to another episode of Design Makeover, a show where you can watch Canva experts improve designs submitted by the community and learn some tips and tricks along the way. My name is Leah and I'm from Canva Design School. All our past episodes are also posted on YouTube. For those of you watching the replay on YouTube, we have created a playlist with all the Design Makeover episodes. You'll find the link in the description of the video. So I'd like to give a very warm welcome to our guest for today, Jordi. Hi everyone, I'm Jordi. I've been working at Canva for about a year and a bit. I'm a motion designer, which is just a fancy term for animator. And I just really love giving a lot of like life and motion to all of the designs that we produce here. It's very exciting. So today I'll be making over two designs submitted by our Canva community, the Design Circle. Also, thank you to everyone for sharing their designs. They all were really fantastic, but I had to only pick a couple. And I'm really excited to show you how easy it is to design in Canva. Today we'll be focusing on hierarchy, balance and alignment. So the designs that we'll be working on today will be a YouTube intro, which comes from Nidhi. And it's a YouTube intro for their channel, I Say Kids. Design two, it's an illustrated Facebook post, which I found really, really interesting. So it'll be exciting to show that one. And if you would like the chance to attend our Design Makeovers Live, this is the website where you can find all our upcoming sessions. So I'll post it in the chat for everyone now. And I'll let you take it away, Jordi. Excellent, thank you. All right, so to kick it off, let's cover a little basic design principles. So design principles are approaches or rules to help you make a strong visual choice for your design or choices. And being aware of these can help us make more functional pieces and really amp up the visual appeal. So hierarchy is making things visually stand out in order. So like one, two, three, four, five, so maybe your heading is the largest font and then under you would have any copy that you would have underneath the heading would then be smaller. So that way your eyes are drawn to the heading first because it's the largest thing on the page and then the copy underneath because it's smaller. If we talk about repetition, it helps us create structure to the piece and makes it feel really consistent. So this could be like the use of same color sets or icons or even repeating illustrations. It could even be the way that you put text on a page. If you were to group them together and then place them to the left and then you do it on the right and then you do it on the left and then you do it on the right, it lends back to visual hierarchy, but that repetition also allows the eyes to flow through the piece. Alignment, it's keeping things lined up within a grid. So a lot of the time when designers or literally anyone I think a lot of people do this quite naturally but you'll have a piece and you'll want to kind of put things in line with each other or you'll kind of want to put them in little columns and grids and we naturally do that so that we can easily take all the information we need in one glance if you had everything really messy on the page and it was all kind of overlapping and a bit wild your brain would just go ah I can't handle this so it's definitely a very good way to make your design easy to read and easy to digest. And balance. So balance is making sure everything has the same visual weight. This means that things are similar sizes, line up, and nothing feels too large or small within the design. So if you imagine you have two sets of scales and you want the scales to equal the same amount, you would put the same amount of apples. So just in a similar way for a design, you could say, I have copy, I have a heading, and I have an illustration. So maybe using the idea of hierarchy and balance, you will say, okay, so my heading is going to be the biggest thing on the page, my copy is going to be smaller, and then my illustration will be a very similar size to both the copy and the heading. So they're all kind of sitting in the same sort of space. Whereas if you had that illustration really, really tiny, like really small, it would kind of feel a bit off. It would almost feel, I like to imagine it as if the piece has real weight. So if I put all of my heading and all of my copy, like all of my text to one side on the left-hand side, and it's all really big and I have a tiny illustration, it's going to feel like your design is going to go, whoop, 
<laughs> and fall over. So it's kind of nice to make sure they all sit in a balanced way and they really complement each other. Next part, keep it consistent. Pretty easy one, but it's also I found when you're noodling away at design, it tends to be the one that goes the most awry. I fail at this one all the time. I'll start really consistent and then I'll go really wild. So I have a really strict regime I like to follow so I don't go too intense. So I like to think about it as if your design was a book or a film, everything it contains should live within the world that you're making. So you probably wouldn't put a swashbuckling pirate into a sci-fi film about the future. Instead, you might find a time-traveling space pirate in this film. So just like a design, having inconsistent fonts or visuals that don't match, what you're trying to create can make the piece feel like disjointed or visually noisy, or you just lose the message or the story of the piece you're trying to tell. A little thing that I like to do when I'm trying to keep things consistent is I really ask myself, what purpose does this thing hold on the page? Like, does it need to be there? Does this copy need to be there? Does this piece of illustration need to be there? And asking yourself these questions and, and treating design as a function, then every single thing that you put on the page, or even if it's in a video, it doesn't matter, it will all add to the message that you're trying to create rather than distracting from it, essentially. Keep it simple. So simplicity is really the key. So before I start a piece, I like to write a few notes. And the notes are usually the following. What is this for? Who is this for? So who will see it? Who's the audience? Where will it live? So is it going to be on social media? Am I making this for a billboard? Will this be a printed shirt? Is this going to be a mug on someone's desk? Is this an animated Christmas card? And what needs must go on it? So essentially what I was saying before, making sure that things really function in your design. I like to ask myself, if I had to make minimal viable product, like what would that look like? If I could only use five things for this design, what does that look like? And we use this approach at Canva all the time. We usually just call it MVP, which is minimal viable product. And essentially what this means is the absolute minimum you would need to create the piece so you can really nail the design and you can embellish where needed. In design, I often go by the main structure should all have a purpose. So the main structure of everything should have a purpose. Like a piece of copy should be short and as quick to read as possible or colors should not make it hard to see the design. So everything is leading to form and function. But it's also like fun and looking beautiful. Don't forget, design is meant to be fun. It's not meant to all be rules and like super stressful. Also, if it feels cluttered, I can say what does need to be here. And this really helps with the culling process if I need to take things away. But once you do have your absolute like form and structure down, it does give you the freedom to then really go wild. You can be like, I'm going to put however many colors I want. And I want to really go and put really specific illustrations or really special illustrations. Or I want to use really thoughtful pieces of animation. Or maybe I've decided after looking at everything, the piece that I was going to make doesn't really fit what I'm trying to produce. So maybe you were like, I wanted an Instagram post and you look at it and decide like minimal viable product and all it really needs is maybe a piece of text. So like a single line that says clothes on sale. <laughs> and then it also says the business name. And you decide by looking at that, you're like, oh, minimal viable product. It's not a lot going on here. I can actually make this an animation now. And then you could have like lots of shirts and stuff. Moving on to our first design. So design one. This design comes from Nidhi Gupta and is a YouTube intro for their channel, I Say Kids. There is a lot of information in this piece and it's using video. So I think it should be a really fun one to tackle. I'm going to switch to Canva. Before I do that, I should probably play the piece first. So I'm just going to give this a quick play. So just a couple of things I want to note. So I've noticed that the music comes in a little bit late. So we can probably extend that out. Also, I think the other thing that I've noticed, I really, really like the little I Say Kids Knowledge is Power. That's really cute. But there's just, there's a lot of copy really fighting for space here. So like, you know, there's 
continents, what of the day and inspirational stories and short stories. And I really love that they have a lot of offerings for their YouTube channel, so they offer all these different things. But at the moment, everything is kind of sitting at the same size. And I think by using a bit of alignment, using a bit of hierarchy, using a bit of balance and really cutting this up a bit as well, we can kind of space everything out and really just make a lot more space and add a, a lot more like hierarchy so it's a bit easy to digest all of it because I think it's a bit of a shame that we're just kind of losing the individual elements a bit because they're all pretty boxed together but I do really like this little like scrapbook approach with the paper in the background I think that's quite nice it feels very like child orientated it feels quite tactile as well which is really good I've noticed they also have like little subscribe now at the end and there's this like little blurb to the left too which is good all right so having a look at this I went ahead and did some magic before and just made a quick script so I noticed that they have their like branding up here the I say kids YouTube knowledge is power and then they also have this little like blurb down the bottom here and then they've also got all of this copy as well so short stories inspirational stories also just so everyone knows if you're aware or not down in the left hand corner there's this little button called notes and if you ever want to write yourself notes or you're presenting like i am right now i literally wrote a bunch of presenting notes on my other screen this is a really good place to just kind of write your thoughts down give yourself a brief leave notes for yourself or you can directly comment onto the piece as well which is really good that this little button here all right, so I think first place to start would be to maybe break this piece out. So I would probably take this I Say Kids Knowledge is Power piece and I'm going to break that out into its own little. So I've just duplicated Control D. If you press on the timeline and press on a little clip, if you press Control D, It'll allow you to duplicate at the moment. I've just got a blank screen and I'm going to jump in to templates and I'm going to find a template. Also, do we have any people in the chat who have children at home or know some kids? <laughs> yes, we've got a few people have raised their hands and we've got Tanya in the chat. Yes, yes, Bequita. <laughs> few people with kids by the looks yeah so i'm going to look for abstract youtube intro i've cheated i've checked ahead of time so i can find which templates i really liked so you didn't have to watch me scroll for hours all right so i love this little ainsley's art classroom and if we press the little play button down here we can kind of have a little preview of what it is and I think that's quite fun. I like the little animation they've got going on here. It might be a little bit intense, but I think we can definitely work with it. I'm going to put this here in the timeline. So I noticed that they have this little girl with the butterfly. So I'm going to see if I can find her. So if I go to the elements tab, you can pretty much search for anything. So I am going to search with go butterfly <laughs> hey there she is founder i rather like this visual so i think i'll uh pop her in here nice in the corner um there's a lot going on behind her so i might just delete out some elements so that she can fit we'll also need to add in i say kids so let's also this is the little like playhead i think but you can click and drag so you can kind of get a really refined look at what you're doing. So I might come in here and edit this text and change it to, so it's lowercase i, I say kids. I don't think we need this. So I'm going to right click on the piece and ungroup. And then I'm going to come in and delete out this middle piece. Drop this down, bring this up so they're all together. I think, what have they done here? They've made this 
black and this red. So I might change this to knowledge is power. Very cute tagline, I like it. Very design school appropriate. We'll change it red so that it kind of matches and already I've got a bit of a thing happening here. So I like playing with the designs just a little bit. Don't be afraid to make things overlap, by the way. So now we've got this nice grid. Everything's kind of like off to the edges. We have this piece in the center. We've got the name of our channel and the tagline of the channel really, really clear. So this is the first thing that people see and it's very obvious. All right, so I'm liking where this is going. I think maybe the animation needs a bit of it's a very intense this animation but i do like how kind of boppy it is so now might be a really good time to go in and go to the animate section and when i'm deciding on animations for video or literally anything the first thing i kind of do is i come into the animation section so if you also just a note if you just click on the page or if you click out of the page and you have just this animate button when you click it it will be page animations which means it's animating the whole page and if i hover it'll give you a little preview of all the different animations which is quite neat but if you click on an individual piece or maybe you click on like three together and then you click on the little animation button you'll notice it says tumble because they already have an animation attached to them and then, yeah, so exact same thing, you can kind of hover. So then you can animate like just specific parts if you want. I'm going to animate the whole page. So I personally really love scrapbook. I think that'd be really nice for this one. It feels very like tactile, childlike, keeping with that, the little like photo frames and stuff that we've got going on. And I think this only really needs to be, so to change the length of a clip, you just hover over the clip until you get like a little arrow. And then if you pull in the arrow, you'll notice that the seconds are going up or down. So I'll probably hit it about three seconds. Oh, that was the other thing I forgot to mention. With this piece, I think it's it's quite long for an intro. It goes for 33 seconds. So we could probably cut that down a bit. I would say maybe 10 to 15 seconds is a good spot. So. Yeah, so that's three seconds. Also to preview how long something is, you literally just need to click on the clip and it'll show you in the left-hand corner. All right, so let's create a new page. All right, so I think the next thing that I would like to do is come in and start giving a bit more unity and really kind of fleshing out this section with like short story continents, word of the day, uh, I think that's inspirational. I really like how they're all kind of coming in, but at the moment they're all really fighting for visual space. So let's come in here. And I really like these little pieces. So I'm just going to have a bit of a play and going off the idea of frames, I think I'll come into, I'm already in elements, which is fantastic. And if I search frame, if I search for frame, I know that we have a couple of like interesting shapes and like, I think let's, let's drop a couple of these in here. I really like the use of these little shapes. So if I hold down shift, I can choose multiple things at the same time. So I might just grab, yeah, I'll grab, I will grab these four because I think we had seven items in total, but it kind of, it doesn't matter too much. So for me, this is all feeling a bit wild. <laughs> I think what I might do is I'll have one piece here, one piece here, one piece here, and I might get rid of this because he's just kind of sitting there doing not much. And I'll also want to put some copy in as well. 
So I'm going to take BM HANA, which is our typeface, and I'm going to throw a little bit of text in. So just add a heading and change it to maybe that font. And then I'm going to make a lot smaller so that we can kind of show the offerings. I also like to keep things centered to themselves. So if you have a heading and another element, you kind of probably want to keep them either center aligned, left or right aligned, but keeping them within that. If you can see the box that's kind of produced around this piece, that's a really good indicator where you can kind of slide things around. All right, so probably still want some more frames, but in elements, here we go, it's still open. So grab. This one that's kind of a nice organic shape. And I know that we have a bit of a square. Mm. I don't know if the square is working. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. It feels a little bit odd. What else can we do? Do we have a different shape? Where is it? Okay, yeah, use this one. You can also add a bit of balance by just having different elements that are similar so you'll notice that I'm sticking to circles this also probably falls into repeating so I'm sticking to circular ish shapes I'm going to add in these headings very quickly mm -hmm. where did I put it I put it in notes also just so you know notes are attached to each slide so they will change every single slide and just with video a clip is essentially a slide so what do we have? Word of the day, continents. Okay. So again coming in here and just so if you go to the right hand corner you can alter the position of things so where they sit in relation to another or where they sit in relation to the page so i'm just making sure that all of these pieces are centered to one another that'll help give us a bit of balance as well you'll also notice that i've got our two frames here roughly sitting in similar positions. They're not exact, probably a little bit too close to the edge. I'm going to hop into video. So if I go maybe Scrabble is a good one. Here we go, we've got, what have we got? We can, have something like this. Also, the reason I use frames was so it's easy to just drag and drop the pieces in. Now we want to bring things together. Okay. All right. So then maybe map. Map is a good one. Also, I'm kind of just copying what they've already got here. But because it's a video, I think this is a really good chance to use video in these sections where they have frames rather than just purely having stills like photos. Let's see if we can find something nice. So I watch that a lot and play it. This piece is quite long, so you'll notice it's really lengthed out that. So we can, um, if you ever want to chop a piece of footage, you come up here to the left-hand corner and you literally just drag this all the way down, all the way across, and then you hit done when you're done. Just double click to be able to access the footage that's within the frame. But you can drop footage or photos or whatever you like in there. Maybe world is better. Feels more inclusive. That's quite cute. Also, it was very impressive to hear that everyone's from so many different places. Oh, yeah, we definitely have lots of people tuning in today from all over the world, which is cool. Okay, so I'll put in this little bit of space. Short stories. Let's type in stories, I guess. 
So I'll pop that in. So I'm just making sure, I'm having a bit of a play here, but I'm just making sure that nothing's too long. Clipping all of my video so that it's like nice, short, snappy, finding like just a nice section where they're like talking to each other. Oh, that kid's like pulling a little bit of a stinky face. So maybe I'll go further along. Yeah, that's pretty cute. She's smiling, that's great. Since she's smiling around about here, I'll make sure that I bring this in a bit. And also I probably don't want this to be longer than say, what did we say, like three, three seconds? There we go. Excellent. So I have been pottering around with this for a while now. So let's, I'm going to come up here and same thing again, I can kind of have like a little bit of a look at what I think is working or what I feel will work here. Or if you don't want any animation, you can always just go to none. So I'm probably not going to fully finish this design because I have already pre-cooked one earlier, but I think you should get the basic idea. So essentially just making sure that in your design, things are easy to read. So when you translate still designs into animation, you then have frames, which means that rather than having one design, you can have multiples of designs on different frames, all saying similar things. And it makes it easier to read. And this is all about like hierarchy as well as balance. So now we know that the channel is I Say Kids. We know their tagline is knowledge is power. We have this little graphic from the channel. And then we also have some other little graphics to just add a little bit of extra emphasis. And this definitely says like kids to me. And then we also have some little frames as well. So similar to how we've got these frames here, but I've tried to make sure that they're keeping to a grid. So it's not perfectly to a grid because the pieces are a little bit organic and blobby. So I've kind of pushed them all out, but giving that negative space in between to make essentially our grid so that these things are really easy to read. Like now I can see what are the day continents, short stories. And if I don't read those, I can still see the videos. So visually you want to break things up, whether it's in your design or on your timeline to make it easier for your design to be understood and seen and, and essentially just get the information across. And also in a cute way, I think this little cutout style with the scrapbook animations is quite cute. The very last thing I wanted to point out, so we've also talked about clipping of layers because I think Nita just needed to clip their layers a little bit more. So just really bringing them in so they're nice and short and snappy, especially for this format. The very last thing I want to touch on is just, we have audio here, so I'm just going to press Command D to duplicate and I'm going to take their audio and drag it across. Audio works exactly the same as editing footage or clips. So you just click on it, you come to the side, you see the little arrows and you can drag it all the way out and all the way in. And it really just depends on how long the clip is. So you can actually right click on the audio and it'll give you a little volume or you can adjust it as well. So you can clip it and then you can duplicate it. So adjusting it, you'll see that this, everything that's outside here is the audio. The audio is so long. This song is very long. <laughs> I guess this is a very short clip I've made there. This audio, you can see it and you can kind of like pull it across as well. So if you decide you want this to start in the middle section and end a little bit further, you can do that. But I want to start the music at the start and end it somewhere around where it's sitting. So I did make one earlier. I really loved quite a few things about this design. And I think just a couple of things really needed to be tweaked. So I'll give the before a little bit of a play. And then this goes on for a bit of time. And then this is the piece that we produced after. We've essentially just kind of like spaced out 
all of those elements and clip them so they're nice and short and quick to kind of read and to look at because you don't want to be sitting on your intro for too long. So yeah, just to recap, balance. So just making sure everything is of equal weight and time, the use of alignment. So making sure everything sits to a grid and is well legible. So pushing those little pieces out in the frames and then hierarchy. So it's easier to know what to see first, especially by breaking things up on the timeline. And also I just wanted to say, you know, this is a really good piece. Like I, I think you had some pretty good foundations in here, which was really nice. Next piece, Joe Badul. I'm actually really excited about this one. This one's really different. So a lot of people will usually do like Instagram posts or mugs or T-shirts or books or I don't know. We've seen all sorts of things come through. But I think it's really exciting that this person did a Facebook post and it's like an illustrated piece. It's like a little piece of art and it's beautiful. It's very like interesting and fun and I really like that. It's a, it's a nice way to use Canva. So I'm pretty excited on this one and I'm going to jump straight in. Just a little bit of groundwork on this one. If we just have a bit of a look, we have a person working on their computer. They've got a cute little cat. I'm guessing this is their home. Maybe they're working from home. Maybe this is a reference to the way that they work. And yeah, so maybe this is a reference to the way they work or where they work or just a little piece. It could have even been like a little, this is meant to be me working at home and they'll share it with their friends or something cute like that. I like to think, I, I'm not 100% certain. I like to do a little bit of a breakdown of each design piece. And this one's a bit interesting. So just quickly having a look at like, who is this person? What are they doing? Where are they? And can we see any other details? And by breaking these things down, we can kind of make some foundations for the rest of the piece. I think I said before, I think maybe this is Jobadol. Maybe this is them working from home with their cute cat in their house. Like I said, working, I think they're at home. And I don't know if I can see any other details other than this clock, which I find quite interesting. I really like the idea of that clock. All right, so a couple of things that I did notice is that the style in this is we've got some 3D, we've got some 2D, there's lots of colors going on. There's just, there's a lot in this piece, but it's really interesting because I like their use of depth. Like by using that 3D piece, it's slightly turned, there's a good piece of depth. So I think some small tweaks we can make is maybe by having a smaller color palette so we can really focus in on specific things and also adding a bit of animation. Maybe this will be like a little bit of a loop piece. So that could be pretty cute too. First thing that I would probably do is let's have a look. What have we got here? So we've got a clock. So let's look for a clock and in elements clock. So on the right hand side, we've got this little button here and it's essentially the settings for search. I like to come in and click on the animated one and hit apply filters and then it'll allow me to find all of the animated pieces, which will make this a bit easier. And then I'll just come in here and grab a clock that looks good. Oh, this is a pro element. Maybe we'll grab a different clock then. Mm, what other clocks do we have here? I think this one's quite nice as well. So maybe we'll get rid of that and we'll use a little free element. The next thing that we should probably look for is maybe the room. So if I search room and I click graphics up the top here, I doubt there's going to be a lot of animated rooms. So I'm going to untick that for a second and research for room. Yeah, excellent here. I think that's pretty similar to the room that they've used. So I'm going to scale this up quite a bit and just pop it in there. Also command left bracket to push layers back and command right bracket to bring layers forward, which is just what I'm doing there. So I might bring this clock down a bit so it's kind of sitting there what else have we got happening we've got cat and men are sitting at desk so 
In the chat, cat or dog? Do we have a preference for animal? Dog. Dog. Iguana. <laughs> so same as before, I'm just using the animated search feature. We've got oh, what sort of oh, this dog is very cute. Oh, this dog's cute too. Man, we have a lot of cute dogs. Maybe I'll try and search for poodle, see if we can find a good one. How about we pick, let's pick this poodle. This poodle's pretty cute. And let's put him there and let's search for, maybe we'll search computer and we should be able to find someone on a computer. All right, so let's flip this. Scale this down and maybe we'll pop them here. Maybe we'll make them a bit bigger. So I rather like this person just kind of like hanging out on their computer. They're doing a little bit of animating. The clock's going as well. I just wanted to note a couple of things about palette. So what weather do we think should we have outside? Should it be sunny, rainy? What are we feeling? We've got Ooh. sunny, snowy. Snow. Ooh. Oh, okay. Maybe I put in snow. I'm kind of excited by that. Maybe it's winter outside. So I'm going to drag, grab these little trees and I'm literally just going to see if I can turn this slightly now. I don't know if it's very obvious, but this window is actually transparent. So I should be able to just put things right behind it. So if I drop these back and then just drop that there, excellent. So because this line here is kind of a good guide, I can just turn. So I'm using the bottom of this tree here to match up to this line, just rotating it and fiddling with it until I kind of get the right. Mm, that might be a little bit too much, so I'll just do a little bit less. Now we've got some trees outside. It's snowing. All right, so I think there's only a couple more things that we probably need to go in here. So I'm going to make this person a little bit bigger so that they're taking up most of the space. Now, they're really getting drowned out by the colour that we've got going on. So since it's snowy, I feel like blues would work really well here. So I'm going to start changing these oranges to just some nice blues. I think maybe we'll make the window a bit darker so window and ceiling can be maybe this so then it kind of feels like it's a bit cold in there and also by keeping a muted color palette so essentially if we say blue is one color but we have tones of blue and then let's just say that mustard and green are our other two main colors we're now just drawing attention to only those specific parts of the design so this person is mustard and green they really stick out these trees are green they really stick out the poodle is being a little bit washed out. So can we not change the color of the poodle? It's very sad. I think the floor is this one. No, the floor is not this one. There's many here. Ah, here we go. So now by making the floor a bit darker, the, the little poodle here can stick out a bit more, which is great. And what else? So this room is feeling, we've got a lot of stuff going on in here. I think our room is feeling a little bit empty. So I might just pop in some furniture and, ooh, I rather like this. So maybe I'll grab this chair. I'll kind of like put it off to the side here and I'm going to change the colors so that this chair now matches the blues that we've got going on. So we can probably make, uh, Maybe it needs to be a slightly lighter blue. Maybe that's the answer. Ooh, no, just the... Oh yeah, okay, maybe we go way lighter. Essentially, we're kind of making like a little bit of a silhouetted effect. I think white will definitely work for this. Maybe I've done that the wrong way around. Maybe it should be white on here and it should be... No matter, we can always just mess around till we find a blue that works. Now we've just made a new blue. Let's 
But then we want to probably do the same thing to that one. Excellent. All right, that's working. I think the very last thing I would want to put on here, or maybe second last. So if you're using elements and looking for elements, magic recommendations is a great way to find extra elements that all sit within what you're looking for, essentially. So I might come in here and grab a little plant. I might grab this one. I rather like this one. And again, command left bracket, and I'm just going to kind of push that to the back, push it over a bit. I might push him over a little bit as well. And I like having the dog a bit further behind. One clock up here, and then exact same thing. So I think for the main color of the leaves, we'll kind of just do this. So it's all kind of solid. We don't want too much information going on. And then maybe we can use a lighter blue. That's too similar. That's the answer. There we go. So we actually maybe the whole thing can be. And then maybe the leaves actually can be lighter. Or darker. Yeah, leaves darker. There we go. We've got some stuff going on here now. We're kind of like pushing things back, bringing things forward. I think I might not put the pot plant as white just because I don't want it to take too much attention away from our little hero here sitting in the middle or the poodle because we really want to kind of just draw our eye into that center part of the image. And like, essentially the, the best way to design any piece of art is to make sure that the eyes go in a loop. So you come in, you look at a heading, or in this case, you would come in, you would look at the clock. You might go straight down to that person. You're going to go left to the window and then you'll just do a circle and you'll never leave. Hopefully, if you've done a banger job, you'll never leave this little cycle that we've got going on. Almost all done. So let me just, I think this person might be listening to a bit of music. So I'm just going to add in some music notes. I thought that could be nice. And I'll just make them nice and small. And also another good top tip is if you want to put similar elements or the same elements in together, you can always just flip them or rotate them or change the scale so that they all kind of live in the same family, but they don't look identical. So it's living in that repeating space. And I think that's pretty much it for this one. So yeah, so this is design two that we just did. And all right, so adding motion, animation, or using video format can really change up your design. It adds a whole new dimension and the ability to add more to the piece at different points in time, like extra copy or more visuals. It's also a cheap way to add bang for your buck. So if you were to take a still for Instagram and then add a few animated elements to it, like some animated sparkles, GIFs or text, pretty much anything you can find in the elements panel in Canva, the likelihood of it doing well on social media actually goes up when you have animated elements or an animated piece. They just perform better, unless it's things like photos, like there's very specific things. So much like the designs we've discussed earlier, it's also important to not overload it either. So things moving in a page can be pretty distracting. So you want to keep the focus on like one to two things at a time. You'll notice that I only had about four elements in there that were animated. I didn't have everything moving because that would have just been really intense. So that's one I created earlier. Obviously, it doesn't have our poodle and this is actually a rainy day, but all of the same elements pretty much apply. Makeover number two done. I'll just quickly go over the tweaks I've made. So color palette. By making a simplified color palette, we were able to help the balance of the piece by taking away too much visual noise. Alignment, so we've used alignment to give depth by deciding where our grid is and then pushing things forward or back. So like you'll notice that the person sitting down working, they're closest to us and the cat is sitting further back and they're all adhering to a grid. Like even the plan and the little chair that we've got in there are kind of lined up and the window is sitting in its own space. Like everything's kind of moving in its own little space. And then hierarchy. So 
by using both a muted color palette and motion, we can give emphasis on certain pieces of the artwork more than others. So exactly what I said before, we have our musical notes, our person working in our clock, all sitting in the center, all animated, really drawing the eye in, especially with color palette and grid as well. And then on the left-hand side, to keep you in that little loop, we've got this little rainy cloud. And in our other example, we had like the little snowy trees. That's it, any questions? I would just like to start off by saying a huge thank you to you, Geordie. Oh, and you. I saw an awesome comment from Kimba who said, this is a super cool transformation, like the original, but love what you have done. And she oh. said she is inspired. So it's thank great you. to hear that. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. And <laughs> just before everyone goes i just thought i would tell everyone about the canva design circle facebook group and so this is actually where we got the submissions for the design makeover today so you can find that simply by searching canva design circle into facebook and it should pop up so i think that wraps it up for today thank you Thank you everyone for coming and I hope you learned something. We look forward to seeing you at our next design makeover soon. Thank you everyone. Thank Bye. You.